Hi and welcome back. I'm Mark Richard Adams, post-production professional. Today I'm going to show you a video on how to make an S11 deliverable in Avid Media Composer. What is an S11 deliverable? Well, it's a file, an S11 codec, wrapped in an MXF wrapper, uh, which channels in the UK prefer for their transmission deliverables, okay? Uh, you can have two, you can have a HD and an SD version. Um, so let's crack on. So we're in Avid, uh, I'm going to make a new project. You'll notice in the project format, 1080i50 is selected, so interlaced 50 fields, or 25 frames per second. Uh, the reason that that's selected is because uh, the S11 file itself is an interlaced file. Okay, so best keep it on that, even if you shot progressive. Um, so, let's just call this S11, I'm just going to call this test 3, because I've done a few already. Uh, everything else is fine, color space is okay. Here we go, click OK, and it opens out you'll now see that we need to create some bins. So I've got bin here already. First one I'm going to do is one underscore edits. Next one, two underscore media. Okay, just nice and simple there, good. Um, now keep things in order. I like to put a, a number before it just so I keep, you know, as in the most important number goes to the top. And you could have like a number three for graphics, number four for music, etc. And you would deliver, but it just keeps it logical. Um, I, in media, will now need to import some media. So let's import a test clip. So we can go to import, source browser. And you get this sort of source browser that's sort of borrowed, I would say, in part from Premiere um, 5 Mac Pro 10. I didn't traditionally used to do this. But they do now, and it sort of works pretty good actually. Um, it used to be called AMA link, uh, Avid Media Access link, but they've changed that. It's now just link. So you've got link and import. Import, you can transcode it on the way into a different codec, or link, just bring it in as it is, the native file. Let's go and grab some media. So I'm just going to grab uh, a file from a YouTube channel called Unipro and grab my film on there. There we go. Link that in. Good. There is our film. Good. And now I'm going to grab um, two of the bits. Very important, actually. Bars and clocks. I've got an online technical folder here. And I want to bring in uh, this clock. And I want to bring in the bars. Link those in too. Good. So in the edits, sequence right click new sequence and we're going to call this uh, what the program is but from a uh, clock number perspective now you if you're delivering in the UK you'd be given a clock number okay or a production number now that's the thing that needs to be the, the sequence name okay now uh, we could make something up for this but let's just say this is a film from Unipro I'm going to call this Unipro I'm going to call it underscore um, mark okay and I'm going to underscore zero zero a. So that's going to be my uh, unique clock number. Now, um, let's say if this was from channel 5, um, the first characters would be C5 underscore uh, Unipro Mark 001. That's quite a long clock number. They're not normally that long. Um, uh, you could actually just shorten that down to UP perhaps underscore. So let's go with that for the moment. So let's, but let's say this is going to channel 5. Uh, it's Unipro, it's my VT, and we've got 0001A, which is actually the uh, number of the version. Okay, so let's say that, that this was the first version, it'd be 001A, um, but you might make a mistake on that first deliverable and you need to redo it, and then you call it 2A. If you make another mistake, you then call it 3A, etc. Just so the uh, people at transmission know that the, the higher the number, the master version that is. Okay, so let's click on that, open it out. Now let's go and put our bars down first. So we've got some bars here. I'm just going to drag that down. Bars will be plopped into the timeline. Um, great, so we've got four channels of audio. I don't need all four. We'll deal with that in a moment. One of the big things about an S11 delivery is that we need to make sure the starting time code is correct. Now, this is a, an American way of doing the starting time code. 01000000 works for them. That's fine. In the UK, it's the other way around. It's actually one zero. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, or we call it 10 hundred hours, okay? So if I was to change that starting time code of this sequence, I'd just jump up to the record window here, right click, go to sequence report, and in here, um, I need to change it to 30 seconds before 10 o'clock, which will actually be 09, 59, 
3000. See? Apply changes, you can see it changes there. Good. And there we go. It's now starting the correct time code. What else do I need to do? I now need to add the clock. Okay, so let's go and grab the clock. There it is. And I'm just going to whisk to the end of the timeline, lock it in, and I'm going to edit that down. There we go. So now the clock should start on 59.50.00, and it does. Good. Um, in any deliverable, as you may know, in any deliverable, whatever you deliver, whether it's, uh, you know, ProRes, HQ, whatever it is, whatever your deliverable is, time codes always need to be accurate, absolutely accurate, or we just fail, okay? Um, so we need to make sure that the clock hands are ticking on the second. So if I go through this, you can see that I'm just tapping through now, you can see it's going through. I'm gonna stop on 20, there you go, on 24, so it should, when I go to the next frame, change, good. And we can just keep double checking that all the way down. So when we get to 51.24, which is there, I now know that this arm of the handle will, will move. Good, so we know that that clock is in sync. Good, because that's the clock, it's just counting down the last few seconds before the program starts. Um, you would also need three seconds uh, of black prior to the program starting at 10. Uh, we can't add that in yet, but the way I'm gonna do that is if I just grab the program, here it is here, and I'm just gonna edit that down. So you can see that my video one is going to video one, one, two, one, two, good. I'm just gonna turn on three and four, and then I'm gonna plot that down. And you can see that it plops it in nicely straight after the clock. Not really what I want, but I just need to move it. I actually need the start of the program to start here. So just pick it up and move it down. There you go, starting perfectly. Good, what else do we need to do? Well, zooming in, what we need to do now is create a um, clock number on the clock itself. It's quite important, that's a, that's a deliverable requirement from all broadcasters. Now, I need another video channel, so command Y, there we go. What I now need to do is set an in and an out, so marking in here, and I'm gonna mark an out here. Good, you can see the space there that I've created where I want my clock to go. Now I've got that, that space marked in and out, I just need to go to clip, and new title, and get a legacy title popping up here from Avid. Uh, you don't go to Marquee, Marquee is a nightmare. Um, just ignore it, please. Use something else other than Marquee. Always has been terrible. Okay, um, sorry Avid, but you do need to sort that out. Okay, let's go to, we're on text here, and I wanna put in what this program is. So I'm gonna put the clock number, or the production number, and what, let's say what the film is. So I'm just gonna call this Mark uh, VT. It's a little bit big, actually. Let's just shrink that down. Uh, I'll just put unit pro number two. Maybe let's just reposition that. Okay, there we go. Good. Now, just going to duplicate that, and I'm now going to type in the clock number. Now we chose, didn't we? See five underscore unit pro underscore mark underscore zero zero one a. Okay. to be in the safety margins as well. Good, so that's really all the broadcaster would want on their clock, okay? You don't need a, a duration necessarily, not, if they're, not unless they're asking something specific. They might want, if this is like a party program where it's got four parts, they might want part one of four, you know? So just, just think about that, just the, 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 read the data rules are really important. So let's save that, and I'm just gonna call this clock. And it's going to go to media, that drive, and this codec, which is fine, 120 is fine. Uh, placing the timeline into out. This is a really cool feature, actually. I've always liked this, though, when Avid added this in a few years ago. Uh, once I create it, it's going to plop it into that space. So I don't have to edit it in. No, really nice feature, actually, from Avid. Okay, and you can see now that there it is. Good, we're ready to go. Uh, I just want to get rid of quickly the audio on uh, three and four. I don't need that for the bars. So I'm just finding that and lift it out. Good. So we have our bars and tone. We have our clock with card and we have our program. And it's starting 
at exactly 10 hundred hours. Now, at the very end of an AS11 delivery, you need to add a freeze, okay? It's really important. Okay, so I've jumped to the end of the timeline. I want to tab back one frame, mark it in, and then I want to hit um, match frame. So the frame here has been jumped into the source. Now, if I go to Composer and I go to Freeze Frame, I want to add, create a five second freeze frame there. It's going to record it to that drive in, and it's going to go to this bin. So Avid's making a fresh piece of media. There it is. And now all I've got to do is plop that in. Ta -da, done. And we are ready to go. We now have a program and we now have our freeze frame. Why is there a freeze frame on the end? Well, it, again, it's a legacy thing from transmission. Uh, freeze frames are useful um, because, let's say, if timing wasn't quite right, you don't want the program dropping off to black. Uh, no, no broadcaster likes that. So they put a five second hold on the end just to give them five seconds leeway, just in case the timings aren't quite accurate. But with digital transmission now, things are pretty much on the money. They're pretty good. Um, okay, so we are pretty much ready to go. Uh, hit save. Um, that's very important at this stage. Now, we now need to export this file as an AS11. Okay, so the way that we do that is that we can just export, but metadata is key for this program. It's key for transmission to know when the program starts and when it ends. Now, the way that I do that, or the way that most do it in Avid, is you let's go to the start of the program here. And we just need to mark an in at 10 hundred hours. And we go to the end of the program, okay, and we mark an out, okay, at the end of the program there. So we've got we've got a marked area. Now what we need to do is create a uh, spanned mark area. Okay, so if you hit Shift, an option, and then hit M, it creates this little red bar that goes along the bottom. Now this is metadata. Now there's going to be burnt into the file saying it's going to start at that point and it's going to end at that point. Okay. Now if you now go to markers, let's just find markers up here. There you go. You'll see that it's saying that there's marker start and end, and which track it's on. Good, really useful. And if you don't like it, click on that, just delete it, and it'll go. So we're ready to go now for an export. So how will we do that? I'm going to click on the file. Um, we've got the correct clock number here. We're going to right click, output. Uh, we're going to export to file. And we're going to go, I'm just going to, I'm normally going to put this on the desktop into an AS11 test folder. That's the name of the file we want. See, it's .mxf as well, which is good. And let's go to options. And if you can't see options in Avid, let's just go back to that. If you go to go to the options here, and there's loads of drop down menus. We want the AS11 there, okay? Now, I've already created in here some of the metadata required, okay? Um, so just to so you can quickly see what's going on. <clears throat> but if nothing's here, populate it, okay? It's really quite important. Now, the shim, this is really key. Now, what is a shim? Shim's like a, uh, an AS11 sort of parameter for the rest of the metadata and the file itself. Now, if you go to set, you can actually change the shim. Okay, so now we've got UK shims, we've got a HD version and an SD version. I want to use the HD version, really important. Uh, but there are other templates in there as well. Um, there is a, an avid, there's different variants of this shim as well for different broadcasters. Okay, um, I'm happy with that shim. Again, it's just a parameter. Okay, it's just a preset of things that we need. So the series title is going to be Unipro. Frame time mark VT, that's fine. The shim name is UK, for UK, Digital Production Partnership, HD file. That's the version 1.1, don't worry about that. And audio track layout, you've got loads of different crazy versions here, but the r 48 a means that it's a stereo file only, okay? So th that's all you need to know. Uh, you've got primary audio language is English. Uh, now we need to change the clock number, okay? So, because this is incorrect, we need it to be what it is over here, okay? So I could type it back in. So C5 underscore pro underscore mark underscore 0001A. Okay, now synopsis, mark chats away, you know, for Unipro, that's fine. Spell things right, Mark, there we go. Uh, originator Unipro, copyright year, there's lots of other like, bits of metadata, but the starred ones are the key ones here. Picture ratio, that's fine. Now, 
every file that gets sent to broadcast needs to have a PSC check, photosensory epilepsy check, okay? Um, now, normally you can choose not to, but maybe your broadcast is okay with that, or maybe your broadcast is gonna do it at their end, but ultimately it would be yes. And I always use one called VidChecker, um, it's a pretty good version. Um, there, but there are other versions to use. Uh, video comments are good overall. You can expand on that if you want to. Secondary audio, don't worry about these. This just means uh, that this will be ignored. Don't worry about those. Audio comments, fine. Um, yeah, again, you can really expand on that if you want to. That, that's okay. Lineup is starting at 30. Clock start is 50. We know it is because we've done it already. Okay, down here. And then, of course, we completion date. That completion date is incorrect. So let's just make sure that we write the right date in. Program text language is English. I put a demo. Email address and a demo phone number, but that's what transmission would want those. Okay, and once you've done that, we can save as. I'm going to save that um, template. Okay, I'm going to call this uh, Unipro test. Okay, and hit save, and here we go. The file is now exporting. Right, that file's exported. I'm just going to jump over into the browser, create a new bin, three underscore as. 11. Here it is here. So let's just see what the file looks like. Input source browser. Again, we can just link that in. Let's go and find it. It's 11. There's the file. Link it in. And here we go. Let me just expand this and we can see that here's the file. It's files and tone. There's the clock. And you'll see that it's counting down at the right time. Let's go back to It's going to move on 51. Good. And the program is going to start at 100 hours. There we go. And at the end, we of course have our freeze frame. Excellent. And you can see the spanned marker here. So that's metadata in and out of what's going to be transmitted. Good. One thing I will add is if you actually look in the bin here, you can actually see all the metadata that we inputted. Okay. Clock number, synopsis, originator, vid check. So all that metadata is there and all that metadata will be required by your broadcaster. Hope you found this interesting. Um, leave me any comments below. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you next time.